This is Brett with Collins Forest Technologies. Um, behind us is our S13 track car. Uh, we have a VVTi 1JZ um, with a Berg Warner turbo on it. And uh, today's video, we're going to talk about differential selection and how to strengthen up uh, the rear portion of your drivetrain to make it capable to handle the amount of power um, from a CD09 swap or doing a JZ to CD09 or, or an LSX to CD09 in your S chassis. And these are just some things that we've kind of learned along the way that it would have been really nice to, to find easily on the internet uh, in one source as opposed to having to go to multiple different forums to kind of get the information that we needed in order to make our drivetrain as strong as it is now. All right, so here we have um, a bunch of different differentials that we've picked up so that we can basically make our drivetrain as strong as possible. And we'll share with you kind of what we did in order to make our drivetrain really uh, strong and kind of able to handle, you know, third gear clutch kicks almost standing still with really good uh, sticky tires. So what we were having a problem with to start out in the beginning was uh, we were running a stock Nissan uh, 240SX differential is a 4.08, I believe. I think that's the, the gear ratio. It was a six bolt axle. Um, this is pretty much it right here. This is a, an ABS version. You can tell by the pigtail being at the front. It's an R200 casing, which is this part right here. And the six bolt configuration. And they're, they can handle power. I mean, we have a, an LS car right here that, uh, you know, puts down 536 at the wheel and it wasn't able to break axles uh, in stock form with the stock rear knuckles and stuff like that. With this car we do have the Powered by Max rear drop knuckles and I think that kind of helped uh, that with our decently aggressive alignment also helped uh, configure the, the axles in a way that it started snapping the axles uh, relatively easily. So uh, we went through 12 axles in one weekend, which was a, a major pitfall for, for uh, competing on any level. So uh, we're making this video to kind of edify you guys, the viewers, to, to show you what we have, what we've done to strengthen up our setup for affordable, uh, an affordable way to kind of go forward and, and uh, put a lot more power to the tires. So we started with the S13 diff, like I said before, R200 casing. It's got a smaller bolt circle right here on the differential. The Pilot is the same on almost all Nissans. Uh, even on the bigger Q45s, it has a different bolt circle, but the Pilot is all the same. So until you get to the R32, which has a completely different uh, flange on it altogether. It's a six bolt, so a lot different. Um, back to the S13 stock differential. This is great. It can handle five, 600 horsepower until you get really sticky tires and you get the axles right, and then it starts breaking here. Um, this is a good solution right here. This is a 9701 Q45. If you're doing a CD09 swap with a Jay-Z or an S13, like a, a SR20 or an LSX, and you're putting down between four and five, 100 horsepower or foot-pounds of torque, this is a great solution. The only problem that we've seen is it's five bolt um, on the you know axle flange on the stub shafts coming out. Um, J30 has a 5 bolt axle and so does the Q45 so you might need a mixture of both of those to get the lengths right in order to go into the S13. Also uh, one thing to be noted is that the bushings to mount it up to the chassis are spread apart a little bit different than this. I, I'm not sure if you're going to have to make some elliptical bushings here in order to install this. We haven't personally installed this into our chassis yet. The pumpkin cover on the back is also a little bit different between these two. Four bolts on this system, two bolts on this system. So like I said, 97 to 01, different configuration. You can unbolt this and put it onto here. However, this has two speed sensors signals, uh, two reluctor uh, gears where you can put the speed sensors or get some sort of a, this is for ABS obviously, but you can use one of these speed sensors to get some sort of uh, speedometer on your 240 if you don't have uh, an ABS differential at the moment. So a good affordable way to get the power down would be a 97 to 01 T45. The other good part about this differential is the gearing. The gearing's 3.7 somewhere around there. It's a little bit lower than this 4.08 which is a um, S13. 
uh, differential. The 350Z is going to be 3.54 in some of them. This one, I believe it has a viscous in it. The flange yoke right here is a little bit bigger bolt circle. Pilot's the same di dimension. The back cover is the worst part of it. It only has one bolt. It's also very weak. So you can switch this out with the Nissan cover, I believe, and then that, that'll give you your four bolt positions. Uh, but then you lose, again, uh, these different um, speed sensor pickups. Or these, these are basically for the ABS, but you lose these for the ability to create a speed sensor for a CD09 swap vehicle. The good part about running a 350Z um, differential is that the gearing is really good. It's 3.54, so if you have like a JZ with a 350Z transmission or a CD09 transmission, um, the only thing you need to change would be the flange yoke on the backside, make a one piece drive shaft, and then you got to get the axles modified in order to run this. The 350Z axles, now that we're moving on to that, actually fit into the spline of the uh, Nissan 240 hub, the rear hub. So these are 29 spline, and they work pretty good for 4 to 500 if you want that 3.54 gearing. Uh, this works great. We were breaking these quite frequently, so we decided that it wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna work for what we're doing. So, uh, but we're putting down 646 at the wheel, um, you know, without any issues on the motor and the transmission and the drive shaft. It just came down to the differential and the uh, the axle's kind of messing up. This is probably the best, most ideal differential out here. All of these are R200 casings. The casings look really similar with all these different systems because they are. So this is a 91 and 96 Q45. I believe it's 91 and 95. I could be wrong. But anyway, uh, this is a 3.5 something as well. It's also very uh, geared very low. The flange yoke has a bigger bolt circle. It shares a similar bolt circle as the 350Z. So if you're gonna go ahead and make a different drive shaft, you can contact us, we can get you a drive shaft for this. If you have a, a current CD09 swap with a 1JZ. Something to also note between these two variants that's also different than the S13 and the late model Q45 is that these are six bolt equidistant uh, axles. And, and these are, this is five bolt, and then this is also six bolt, but it's a different configuration. So in order to run either one of these axles, you have to have a six bolt um, stub shaft going into the differential. So there's several companies that now adapt the 240SX29 spline axle that goes into the, the stub axle that goes in. They basically cut off the end of it, re-weld a plate onto the end, and then kind of uh, machine it down to where it's concentric and, and it's nice and it works. We actually are running those currently in our 240SX differential with one Q45 driver side axle and then an R32 passenger side axle. When you do run those larger Q45 axles, these are actually 30 spline, so you get a bigger shaft and one more spline. So this helps uh, aid in holding down the power, and we've seen people put down 800, 900 horsepower, or foot pounds of torque to the wheel using this setup. We would really like to move on to the R230 diff as a, a last resort, but this is a, a a different gear ratio, we have to change the companion flange. We're probably gonna machine uh, something to work with this front section, or just kind of take this off and use the Q45. But long story short, this would be a last resort if we really start breaking differentials. Um, if this one's not gonna hold up, we'll switch to this first, and then this would be the last iteration that we're gonna do before we do anything else. But uh, that's pretty much about it. The, the R32 has two different axles. One of them fits in, it's the the longer, I, I think it's the driver's side on the R32, but the passenger side definitely does not fit in anything. So there's no use for any of that. But uh, these are pretty hard to come by in, in the United States. And if you can get one, I'd highly recommend it. It's a real short gearing. And uh, with a CDO9 swap, you can definitely get a really decent uh, track vehicle to kind of put down some healthy power. So, but that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, comment below. Uh, if you have any inquiries, hit Collins Garage, Instagram, or our website, collinsadapters.com.